Now, there are five kinds of dress codes you must put on if you want to last long in a place. Are you here with me? Number one. Facial expressions. Facial expressions. I will explain it as we go. Number two. Eye contact. Number three. Gestures. Number four, touch. Number five, voice. I remember when I went to the U.S., one of the things I bought my wife was a sewing machine. Embroidery type. I called her, I said, I don't want it. I don't need it. I said, don't worry. When you don't need it, when I need it, I'll use it. Currently, she uses it. I've never used it. She uses it. You be smart. When your wife says, I don't want it, I don't need it. Are you not ahead? Don't you know what your wife wants? Don't you know what your partner wants? Are you not? And most often, have you not noticed this about women? You are going to buy food. Example, papaya or watch. Will you eat? No. Are you sure? No. I said I won't eat. When you bring the food, you will regret. I said when you bring the food, you will do what? Married people, is it true? It's not true. Now, number me. Which fish, fish is it? I've told you not to chew meat. This meat is mine. Now, we fight unnecessarily because we are heads that don't presume what our necks want in life. How many married men are here? How many of you have supported your wife's vision? You have supported your wife's vision. Let me show you something. We always want the woman to support our vision. A home without a balanced vision is a confused home. Okay, you don't like what I'm saying. Let me go on. Look at some say, did you dress for the occasion? I didn't hear you. And what the person say? Now, there are five kinds of dress codes you must put on if you want to last long in a place. Are you here with me? Number one. Facial expressions. Facial expressions. I will explain it as we go. Number two. Eye contact. Number three, gestures. Number four, touch. Number five, voice. You see, people think that we, people only understand us by what we say. Let me give you an example. Sam, you are single. Come and let me use you. If you are a guy, be very friendly. If you are talking to a lady and she's talking to say, hey, hey. What is the lady trying to tell you? She's interested. She's interested. Simple. You, 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 you don't, you are not interested though. But the fact that, you, hey. <laughs> to the guy, you tell, you just told her to propose. It's a language. You are flirting. To you, the lady, it is, oh, I'm just being nice. 
even the, I will teach you the distance between you and somebody's talk. Me tells me how far both of you have gone in life. The distance, how close, how the social distance. Thank you. Am I teaching well? So you are, hey, all the guys are troubling me. Like, well, when they trouble you, you've proposed to all of them. Lady, you have proposed to all the guys. Pastor, me, I will never open my mouth to propose. You never did. Lady, if a guy is talking to you and put his hand on top of your breast like this, what will you say? Oh, and you had, uh, a guy is talking to you, hey, this is your stomach. But you do it to the guys and you say it's normal. Ladies, you are proposing, oh! You are proposing, oh! You have proposed! Guys, is it true or is it not true? When the guy goes home, his brain is turning. Should I take her out? Should I propose? What is he saying? He, this lady is the Amabadi. She won't tell me. Oh. Then she come and say, can we go out? I won't go out. Why are you speaking two languages at the same time? Because of the way you are behaving. Some other guys or other ladies wanted to get close. But the way you've been touching... The way you've been, hey, they feel something is going on. You hug too long. <laughs> Pastor Tony, come. How can you hug somebody and lift your leg? Hey! Hey! Is that? I won't pin the key too much. <laughs> Sam says, I'm opening the key. Okay, I'll reduce the keys. <laughs> Many are caught. So you realize that no guy is coming to you. And I tell the ladies this. Prominent men never marry flirtatious ladies. Never. If they date you, it's to sleep with you, not to marry you. Because every great man is highly jealous. I will never want even anybody to even touch you like this. Even if a guy, great man, sees somebody touch your cheek, the boobie foo. Now we won't hug. Imagine, is it true? <laughs> oh, Imagine, is it true? Thank you. Take your seat. Should I continue? So let's look at some few things. Are we going? Are you? Hmm. Years ago, my first car that somebody dashed me, it wasn't such a good car. Ford, is it Ford Serena or whatever? Ford Escort. The man was a king, me, I didn't know. And the daughter needed a child, I prayed for. I didn't even pray for it. I took a seed. And when I took the seed, the lady went home crying and she vomited nail. And she gave birth. When she gave birth one, she was not having birth again, second child. So that, that time I was in my mom's church. When I was in Malam, she came there. One all night after that, she went home, she took child. So the father called me that I should have a car. When I went, I sat down. Give me this chair. I sat down and crouched across my leg. The man entered the room and left. The next time he came, I had folded my arms. He also left. Ah, I've been there since six o'clock. It's now ten. The man keeps coming and going. So the daughter came to tell me that my father says you are challenging him. I said, how? 
He said, you don't cross your hand or your feet in front of an elder. When you do that, it means that you are challenging him. And the man feels insecure. I said, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. The next time the man was coming, I got up. I greeted him. I said, you are welcome. Sir. He sat down and said, the car is yours. The key is yours. Take. Now, if they were not patient for me, the car was mine. I would have lost the car. Jesus said, bind the man, hand and feet, and take him out of my yard, my party. Because he is in the party. He has been invited. But he is not dressed well. Have you folded your arms somewhere when your arms should have been released? This is my own personal one. No. This is me. I would have lost the car. I'll pray for somebody. Again, many are called. And you wonder why the other one got the car very fast. Hey, after all, I raised, I pray for your daughter, and he has given birth, so I'm very anointed. But it's a choice to rather give you a car, not to give it to you. He has his own rights. You raise the dead, so. Joseph, you can interpret dreams and read those. So, be now one thing also that can close your door when you get into an up. So you see, the man entered into the party, right? But he was driven out. May you never enter into an opportunity, and they will drive you out. Amen. Now let me tell you, everybody who has gone into a place that you have not to. Understands a dress code you don't know. Let me tell you this. I was teaching somebody this thing. Everybody smile. Let me see. When you smile and you just show your teeth and your eyes doesn't crinkle, the smile is fake. And great people know that. Everybody can pretend to be smiling. <laughs> Do you people don't even know the eyes also smile. Your eyes, they smile. It will close. Sometimes you can I was watching, don't mind, don't mind Dockers. I was watching Dockers when the wedding was going on with her head. Take your seat. Venice. And Henry was singing, I love you. She was blushing. She was standing there. Doing this. And you could see that she was so excited for a friend. Her eyes had tears. If it had gone on a bit, she would have cried. Your eyes can betray who you are. You can be. I'm happy for you, my friend. I'm happy for you, my friend. Your eyes are too dry to be happy. I think I'm not teaching you well. I said, I think I'm not teaching you here. So, don't think everybody that is smiling with you is liking you. When a dog wants to bite you, it shows you his teeth. Some of their smile is, I will bite you. Look, look, you can see a person's smile. You can even look at the person's eye. You realize this smile is angry smile. The eyes are red. Can I continue? There's a song we used to sing in the world. Look into my eyes. <laughs> you will see what you mean to me. When the couples were kissing, you can kiss and open your eyes. I fear you. It means the kiss has not entered the brain. It is acting. It's a movie. When the thing enters into your brain, your eyes will shut. And when you open, you see that there's a little bit of tearing in the eye. Because your system has succumbed. I want the man to say, I should not 
Auntie Ro, Ro. <laughs> One day, the king looked at Nehemiah's facial expression and knew that Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2, there is something wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. I always tell people, when you always frown, when you always frown, or when you are always happy, you can easily know what is wrong with you. You can smile, frown, smile, frown, smile, frown, frown, frown. Now, we don't even know the day you are sad. I was telling one of my daughters yesterday that you don't come for meetings often. And when I don't come, nobody even checks on me. I say, the way you've not been coming, it has become so normal that when you don't come, we know it's normal. But the one that comes often, every day, if the person doesn't even come one, you feel there's something missing and you go for the person. When you become consistent with the thing, there's a way people can read you. I know you won't clap. When you are talking to somebody and when the person is into you, there's something you must see. People who are into you, they mirror you. Look, I've seen it in church whilst I'm preaching. Whilst I'm preaching, I can be preaching and I'll be doing my head this. So people are doing their head some. They are really into you. You are smiling, they are smiling. It's, it's not conscious. It's subconscious. It's in them. The people mirror what you say. When you see that people are not mirroring what you are saying, they are not listening to you. I come to church early, right? You still come to church late. There's no mirror. I don't need to tell you to smile. I smile. Wait a minute. Ladies, tell me if it's not true. If you see a guy that you admire, a guy smiles at you, what do you do? You smile back. Good. Has he told you to smile back? But when the guy smiles at you, you don't like, what do you do? So when I smile, you don't smile back. You are telling me something. I, you say, I don't need you to say that. I don't mean any harm. I don't need you to say that. You know smiling back is enough to tell me that you don't like me. I'm smiling. It's difficult because you are not used to my smile. You go to a party. Everybody should behave this way. You behave your way. In the same party, you'll be dragged down. So somebody has, will say that, why are we in the same environment? The same presence. Some are falling. Some are receiving miracles. People are buying houses, buying cars, buying land. Me, I'm not buying anything. There is no connection. There is no connection. One day, some protocol ladies were working on the stage. And this protocol, very, very beautiful, Echo Bank, Stand Chart ladies. They were, they were well and dad were on the stage working. And I was sitting here. So I decided to go back a bit. Some guys, that day, they didn't go home early. They were just enjoying the endowment. So I took my phone and WhatsApp one of the ladies that turned and work. As soon as the lady turned and work, the guys, they moved away. Church members who church members. Everybody has a kind of anointing that falls on them. Some, the Holy Ghost can never fall on you. A woman can remove your dress and you fall down on the bed. <laughs> Something will kill a man. When you see the woman starts opening, you are on the bed. Say me, 
No, the man of God will never lay hands on me for me to fall. Me, he will never. No, something makes you fall already. One day I was there, I won't mention it. And one of my daughters, hey, daddy, hey, daddy, hey. I said, what is it? He's coming. Who? He. I saw this guy has dressed. And then I said to myself, so me, I don't dress well. Eh? <laughs> the way, the person, ah, 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 ah. What is it? He's coming. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, he's coming. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. And unfortunately, the guy came, walked past this lady, came to greet me and walked past. Ooh, daddy, he didn't talk to me. But daddy, his perfume. Ooh, ooh, hey, ah. Am I teaching well? Is it true? Is it true? So just imagine you are dating a guy. That's when you are dating a guy. And you see someone. Ah, ah, the guy looks at me. You are dating a lady. You are driving. You see a woman passing. Big here. The lady doesn't talk. The next day. Now you go and say, can we go out? I'm going out. You be The lady can't tell you why. Now the lady is talking. Eh, I feel I need to increase my buttocks. I feel I have to increase my breasts. It's the thing you have been looking at that is communicating to the lady that she's not completed. You have not spoken a word, but your language, you are addressing, you are addressing the lady. I think I'm not teaching well. So very soon, the lady goes to buy artificial bottles. And you know what you have done to this person? You just told her she's ugly without saying it. She begins to have an inferiority complex in her mind. When you are talking to somebody and the person keeps raising his eyebrows, it's a sign that the person is not comfortable with what you are saying. He feels you are lying. My mom taught me this, said Francis. Any time you see a man talking and his the hair is lying or is about to lie. If you see his hands on his stomach, he's about to frustrate you. And I realized that my mom was not lying. Every man that lies, the hands goes on the stomach or the head. People don't answer questions directly. But always answer a question with an answer are dangerous. Most of them, they don't tell the truth. They ask you to think through the question you ask so it doesn't tell you the real answer and it's a dress code. Hey, can I tell you this? Someone like me, I read all these codes. I read it. I read it. I read it. People who know me well will tell you that I don't listen to words. Words don't move me. Actually, Jesus said, be careful how you hear, not what you hear. You can tell me you hate me, but I'm holding your hand. Because what I know you say you hate me is not out of real hate, but because you are frustrated. I'll still hold your hand. You said you hate me, but I'm still holding your hand. Because you don't mean it. But somebody will tell you, I love you, and I'll never hold a hand. Because the love, I know what you mean by you love me. It's a Judas love. <laughs> I've entered meetings that nobody knew me before. But one or two heads of protocol came and said, Please, are you a pastor? I said, Not really. I said, No, you are a pastor. You know why? 
pastors have a language. If they enter a place, one of you can share about a pastor when he enters a place, see his head, he's nodding. Nobody's in his counting chairs. He wants to know how many poor they sit. <laughs> okay, let's close the service. Please, I want to see the manager. Manager is coming very soon. Now come and the manager says he is not around. What did he see? The posture in the CCTV in the man's office is telling volumes. Come for a contract. You sit in front of the person. You are talking. How is business? You mean how is business? The first question to the man sounds like you are someone who can lie. The rest of the statement you are discussing, it is true business. The man will go and investigate you further before doing business with you. The business was supposed to have been transacted that day. But the man asks you a question. You also ask the question. You close the door. Now, I was surprised that Jesus took the guy and bound him. So I asked myself this question, are there people who are bound and it's not the devil who has bound them, but their body language has held them bound? But every level you go and the toughness of your mentality, one day I heard Bishop TDJ said, if I want to kill you, all I'll do to you is to give you half or all of the things I do, you will die. And it's true. Sometimes I wish some of you can become general of us here for 24 hours. And when we see how many people will die, you will know whether our anointings are the same. Should I go on? When somebody's eyebrows goes up, three things the person is telling you three things when you are talking to them. And great people know this. They are surprised. They are worried. They are afraid. How is it? Ever lift your eyebrow, let me see. How many of you know that it's not intentional? You see, there are some things you can intentionally say it, but your face, your body, your body language will betray you. You can decide, plan what to say, but your body will betray you. Preaching is going on. Your eyes are closed. I'm not asleep. Which beat is blowing in your head that your head is shaking left and right? I hear hey, him as up. Hey, him as up in your head. You see, you are close your eyes. I'm teaching. I'm not giving you any beat. But you are asleep. Your eyes are closed and you are doing You are playing a music in your head. You are not here. There's a music playing in your head. How many of you know that music can play in your head and your head will dance? You didn't know your head was dancing, but your head has betrayed you. You say you don't know worldly music. I will not, I will not say it. When the worldly music is playing, you see that you'll be there and your leg will be. Yeah, yeah. And you, 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 you straighten yourself because I'm a pastor. I shouldn't do this in public. But you see, the thing is that your body is betraying you that that music is in you. Should I end? Oh, amen. Matthew chapter 15. The Bible says, this you put seven to nine, Isaiah said, and Jesus quoted that this people honor me with their mouth. But their heart is far away. Can I have the scripture? You can, you can let your mouth do a talking, but your heart will betray you. And me, 
You see, the Bible said, God said, I have found a man after my heart. God examines heart. Oh God, I love you. Oh God, I love you. Wait a minute. Three things that shows a person love you. Should I show you? These people draw near to me with their heart, mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is what? Far from me. So you can lift up your hands, lift up your voice. Have you not heard this thing before? Say sorry to somebody, say sorry. Then you say, sorry, then you say, sorry, then you say, sorry, then you how do you know that king? Yeah. Someone say, stand up. I'm standing by me in my heart. I'm seated. You just stood up in obedience. You didn't, you didn't stand up because you wanted to. So at this stage, it is not you. You don't get a reward. You stood up. But because you were compelled. And that means not from the heart. And anything that is not from the heart doesn't bring a blessing from God. So one of the things I love to do is to give people access to have their own life, will. Because when it is their own will is from their heart. So we come to church. I'll just say yes. You lead the way. Your hands are lifted. You are even kneeling down by your heart. Oh, wow. Let me show you three things that shows a person loves you. Number one. People who love you spend time with you. They spend time. Number two, they give to you. They give. And it's sacrificial. They don't give because they expect you to give back. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. I know where your heart is based on what you do with money. You buy more makeup than offering. You can't tell me you love God more. Oh boy. No, you're a liar. You've been able to buy six Brazilian hair. I've not bought six back of cement for the construction. So there's a song we sing. You've examined my heart and Lord you know me. There is no use pretending. You see right through me. You know where I stand. You see all I do. Lord you never sleep. Please. You can... You can deceive a man, a woman, with your facial expression, but not God. And can I tell you this? Anybody who has become successful in life is successful because this language is the understanding. So they don't have time for people to come and betray them. They read it before they allow you into their life. The Bible said Jesus was there and he said he perceived what people were saying. How could he perceive? He can read their language. There is no place I can hide. Listen, when you are talking to somebody and the person is, let me watch me here. What's the person saying to you? They are impatient. Hurry up and let's go. <laughs> oh, daddy, I'll preach on. All night. You're also nervous.
if you are talking to somebody and the person turns his head this way or that way, what is the person saying to you? I can hear you. He's really listening to you. The words have become too much. It has become a weight. Let me tell you this. You can't tell me you love God and you come to church late. And when you come, you want to go. Forget it. Let me show you this. If you see somebody who has done this whilst he's talking to you, what is he trying to tell you? I don't see people do this before. Which people do you see them do this often? Who? Executives. Yeah. You know what it means? I'm in charge. Everything you are saying is not going through. Presidents and co, they do this a lot. That's why you're going to say executives. If you are talking to your boss and it's done, and it's also not intentional. It's a body language. It's a dress code. He's, he's dressing you. So if I'm talking to you and your hand is like this, I know I've lost. If it becomes like this, hurry up and leave. The person's hands are crossed like this. The head is tilted. I'm hearing you very well. When you are finished, the hand should no. You should have noted from the beginning when the hand was like this and went like this, that changed topic. I want to marry you. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, what, what about we being friends? You change the topic because where the thing was going, it was becoming too dangerous. Prepare and come another day. Should I end? Are you sure? If you are talking to somebody and the person is pulling the ear, who can tell me what it means? You see, you see that some time ago, you said you wanted to be bodyguarding me, and I didn't allow you. You know why? You know why I didn't allow you? I have security. But my security is not your kind of security. This security, I read people's face. I read. I've been in a church where somebody came to church with a gun to shoot me. And I got to know. And I called the person forward. When the person said, leave it, come. And I told the person, so why are you here to shoot me? He said, oh, pastor, who told you? I said, oh. Is it because I told your girlfriend you have a, another boy, girlfriend and you are cheating and the person is pregnant? And then I mentioned the person's name. It is the name that I mentioned that make, the person thought somebody told me. But where I went to and the things I mentioned, the person believed that, ah, wait the any way. The guy didn't say after church, he came to me that, please, this is the gun. Should I take it home? I said, take it home. So, listen, some of these things, you see, why is it that the whole room was filled? The whole room was filled, but the king could go to one person and say, you are not dressed, get out. Because, see, your body language will always expose you. If it's a good language, it will expose you. If it's a bad language, it will expose you. So when you are pulling your ear, it simply means, should I tell you? You are trying to make a decision, but you have not gotten it yet. And it's, it's not, you don't do it consciously. I'm talking to you, I realize that I saw a It means that the demon in your ear is moving out. I'll say more. You are giving me room to say more. When the person one day erased did it and I knew what she meant. Put the forehead in his arms. What does he mean? He 
it means the person is bored, worried. And most often they do this. Some of you, what was, what has happened to you was coming a long time ago. You just didn't see it. If you go for an appointment, office, you visit anybody, and you sit at the edge of the chair, what does it mean? You are not confident. You cannot be trusted. You don't trust the room. It's a confidence person. The person trusts the atmosphere. Why? Who is chasing you? Why are you on your mask? Get said, pay to go. You don't have time for me. The way you sit at means that you really go now. You, want, you, you don't want a long interview. You want us to hurry up so that you go. You are the type, if we employ you, you will not wait till five o'clock, you go home. Your CV is good, but you won't stay long. See, they didn't give me the job. Your seat was who you were. There's a way I move into every office and I sit down. I get into an office and I'm, I'm shocked. When you step on the carpet, you realize that this carpet is of God. You realize that this is carpet. I said, this is your seat. And I sit down. And when the people enter the room, straight away, everybody gives me honor. I never sit in a room which is not mine. And the guest or my host comes in and I'm still seated. No matter who I am. Sophie, if I come to your house, I'm your boss here. And you give me a place to sit. And you are, your, your maid comes to daddy's daddy. Sophie is coming. And you enter. I will get up. And meet you. Because you are the guest. You are the host. You must sit down before I sit. It's a sign that I honor your home. Enter somebody's house, they give you a seat. Yes, you sat down comfortably. Daddy said, I should not sit by the edge. So you sat down comfortably. Then the next thing, you cross your leg. So if you can take your seat. Then the next thing, the guest came. You've gone to visit your in laws. They just came. And when they came, you are still seated. Get up, bend, shake their hands. You see, they should understand that I'm tired. We are coming from a long journey. I'm even pregnant. Shut up. Get up. Bend. Shake their hands. The person coming to the room doesn't know you are tired. If they found out that you were tired, you were pregnant, you were in a certain stage, and you still managed to do that, your ratings goes higher. Yo! Should I continue? I should end. What do you make with gesturing from your hands and palms open? When you are talking to someone, a person does this, what does a person do? What does the person, what does the person mean? I have nothing to hide from you. I'm embracing everything you are saying. Not with fist closed. If their fists are closed, please run. <laughs> it's a fight. <laughs> Open arms. So in the military war, when they are coming for you, you don't even do this. You, go. you are open. You are transparent. There's nothing you are hiding. Yo. Say eye contact. 
If you want to feel comfortable with people, always speak to them, looking into their eyes. But never look more than three seconds. Let me, scientists, and this is proven. Scientists, I'm reading, suggest that most people are comfortable with eye contact of about 3.2 seconds. If, at a time, if you are a stranger. If you are a stranger, one, two, three, you move your eye a bit. If it stays longer, there is somebody who you have become acquainted to. Sometimes look into somebody's eyes for too long could mean so many things. Actually, guys do this for ladies to seduce them. They look at you until you, I know one daughter of mine, she's here, who was at a place and a guy looked at her and she got her and said, what is your problem? I said, me pal. <laughs> Straight. Straight. They look at you. How many of you have been looked at and you became embarrassed before? You just say, the guy intentionally does his hand like this. And when you move here, the guy goes there. How many of you be comfortable in that place? You move. Looking down when somebody is talking to you. If somebody is talking to you and you look down, it's a sign that you are not confident. You are weak. There's a character you have that you are hiding. Hey, let me tell you, I was talking to my pastor. This is, I'll, I'll make it public. And I said, one of the things I see a lot is fake humility. What did I say? Fake humility. When I talk to you about how fake humility looks like, I don't have time. I see it. If, let me give you one example. If you only speak well of me when you are around me, you are fake. I don't need you to speak well of me when you are around me. I need you to speak well of me when I'm not there. I don't need to hear it from you. I need to hear it from somebody. That this is what you've been saying about me. Oh, this pastor is good. I enjoy his ministry. I enjoy his company. Who told you this? Oh, this my friend has been saying it. Well, if you come to me, hey, daddy, you are good. It doesn't kick me. It doesn't. Amen? Unless there's something to discuss down there when you are talking to somebody, don't look down. So, I'm looking at her three seconds. I come back three seconds. Gloria, are you here? I was looking at you two seconds. You can sleep. What does it mean when somebody, you are talking to a person, rub your hands. Everybody rub your hands. What does it mean? I'm telling you something and you start rubbing your hands. What does it mean? Surprise, good. You are excited. When people are excited, that's the way they rub their hands. Has it happened to you before? How many of you, how many of you have, it has happened to you before? Let me say. You realize that you are talking to the person, the person is just rubbing their hands quiet. Oh, corner the pants, so I started rubbing and said, I never, ever, ever, ever. You are lost. You are lost what I said. I said, You are talking to the lady, trying to propose to her, and she is rubbing the hands. The thing is speaking. You are decide, discussing business proposal with somebody, and the person is. All of a sudden, the person starts rubbing their hands. It's sinking in. It 
Should I end? You are not rubbing your hands. So why should I continue? <laughs> Twisting your hair. Ladies, twist your hair. Let me see. When you are going for an interview, you see what you did right now? Guys don't twist their but their hair start. If you are going for a job interview and you do that, it simply means you are nervous, you are uncomfortable. But if you are a male and a female and the lady is doing that, the lady is flirting with you. She wants to sleep with you. Something about you is tickling her. They are playing with... Uh, ladies, do it. Let me see. As you are talking to them, they are holding their hair. I don't go and hold anybody's hair. Oh, that's why I didn't... I wanted to hold her. And do it. So, assuming... Pastor Bomas, I can see her. Come, come and stand here. Let me use your hair. You see, you are talking to Pastor Bomas. And let's say he's... Bring your hand. Bring your hand. Play with this hair. Hold it. No, use this one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, use the other one. Most of it. Uh -huh. They are playing with you, this hair. This one. Play with it. No, this is hair. Use this hair. Uh -huh. This. Is hair. <laughs> hey, if you don't want trouble, disappear, oh guy. I said, do what? Disappear. The devil has not yet come in. I said disappear. Can I tell you another one? If the eye keeps going. If you are not careful, a lady will tell you. Sometimes I'm like, can you blow it for me? So close, I believe. Eh, money moto, eh yeah. When somebody is walking briskly, fast, what does he mean? It shows the importance they attach to the event. You are coming to church and you are walking like I'm walking. The service is not important to you. A leader calls you and you are coming and you walk like you walk. The call is not important to you. So how do I know somebody sees my call my assignment and sees that I'm important by how fast they attend to what I say they should do. Simple. Maybe you will get it done. It's true. But I know that you did it, but it's not, that thing is not important to you. Things that are important to you, poor, they write for it. True or false? How many of you know that when football is going to be played, Chelsea versus Barca, by morning, the stadium is full. Is it true? The match will be played at 6 p.m., flat lights. But they will go there to acquaint themselves, to be comfortable with their place. You, church service starts at 10. When do you come? 11. Church is important to you very much. It's very, very important. That's why you came here at 11. And listen, listen, listen. If we say God looks at the heart, this is what I'm talking. You see, don't let words deceive you. No, no, no. Me, words. 
So it's not important. I'm like, eh, you are, you are misconstruing my word. You don't understand my word. It's not your word, though. It's how. Your language. Okay, you did some, so let me use it. Everybody do this. When you are talking to somebody and they're best saying what does it mean? What does it mean? Most of it, we say it in chi. What it simply means is that the person is evaluating and thinking about. And listen, this is what I'm teaching you. It is not only in Ghana. This thing operates in the whole world. It's something that operates anywhere. And anybody who is intellectually minded knows it. I was there and they came and they said, I am fired. <laughs> no, they fired you long ago. They fired you long ago. Your body language, your dress code. Lateness is a dress code. Everybody who is late is seeming to tell you are not important. There's nothing that is important to anybody that they are late for. Will you be late for your wedding? Oh, answer me. Will you be late for your wedding? Will you be late for your visa? For job appointment? I know when you get a job, now you are late. So now they fire you because you dressed in with early. But now... You dress inside the office with late. You are fired. If you are talking to somebody and you see that the person's hand is on the cheek or whatever, the person has already not this time. When you see the person playing with the beard, it's different from when the person is hanging. When the person is doing this, the person has started doubting all that you are saying. Playing with a chin. And is it not true? When they feel that you are lying. And let me tell you, this thing is not intentionally done. Your body is speaking it. Rubbing your eye. When somebody is talking to you, it's a sign that you don't believe what they are saying. So when I'm talking to you and I say that you start rubbing your eye, I change the topic. What I'm saying is nonsense. Move on. Time. Rubbing or touching your nose with your index finger. Everybody show me your index finger. Mm -hmm. Know what it means? Makes you appear dishonest. Yeah. And it's got up and show us. Yeah. You've been doing it, so you know it. You did it exactly. Do it. The person knows that I can't trust you. Estelle, you are talking to somebody. I'll give you fridge. Oh, is that so? I'll pay. Just give me one month. <laughs> Run away. Just, he said one month, but this one says, if you try. How many of you have done it before? When you, when, how many of you know? It's, not, it's natural. You don't need, you see. Let me tell you, you can try. Let me tell you, you can try. Let me tell you, you will, your body will betray you. When you rub or touch your nose with your index finger, you appear dishonest. If you do it in a conversation that requires openness and honesty, you have trouble accomplishing your goals. Please take your seat. If you see someone else rubbing their nose, it's a good indication that you need to be careful not to believe everything they are telling you automatically. Listen, this thing, if you ask Bill Gates, he knows. Successful people know this. They are not.
not in your heart to know your heart. They are not in your mind. That's why I get angry when I'm preaching and people are sleeping. It's an insult. You can't watch your favorite movie and sleep. And don't tell me, say, my chair. You watch football, first half. Um, your friend say, commentary for half time, 15 minutes. You, you even watch advert. Second half. Then they have to play um, extra time. You watch the pundits. You watch extra time. Then you watch penalty. And when they finish, you sit down and watch the discussion. How the goals were not scored. And you are still sitting. Because it's important to you. When you are with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you love them. You stay 10 hours. And when they say they are going, you say, oh, so soon. As soon as you finish doing what you want to do. And you said, what time did you want to go? When you stand with your hands behind your back, tied behind your back, what does it mean? You can do it for me to see. We think it's a sign of respect. You know what? I was watching, I learned some few things. I was watching Daniel Kolenda. How many of you know Daniel Kolenda? The one that took over from Billy Graham. He was in Benny Hinn's daughter's church, their husband. And they were leading worship. And everybody was kneeling down. He was still standing. And his hands. And I'm like, what is that? Until I did a study and realized that that's the best posture I could. But I thought, rather, putting your hands behind you. You see, in the military, you are, you are in the military. If anybody is talking to you, and your hands are behind you. Put your hands behind you like this. What's the person doing? Paying attention. Another one. That's what you say in the police. But in reality, you make the person who doesn't know you to wonder what are you hiding. Let me give you an example. I don't know you. I met you the first time. And your hands are behind you. In our local, what we call it, the person is showing you respect. When somebody puts his hand behind you, intellectually, me, when your hand is behind you, I'll walk. You know why? Remove your hand and throw it. I'm free. Because when somebody's hand is behind them, sometimes, beginning, they were not like that. As we are talking and talking, their hands is going back. They are constraining themselves from misbehaving. They are trying very hard. They, they want to react. But they need to put themselves in a certain posture so they don't react. So their hands is going behind. The next one that will come, it will come like a flight on your face. Now, in your military order, when you do this, is a sign of respect. You happen. But when you are talking, and let's talk. No, man, we are talking. Then now, as we are talking, the tension is going high. Your hands goes behind you. You are getting angry. You are being irritated. So, you are constraining yourself. Of course, if you are on duty, respect, you do that. I saw you like this. It's okay. But if we are talking, you were not doing it from the beginning. And as the talking is going on, your hand goes behind you. Is it now that you are showing me respect? No. Are you understanding me? Let me end. Pinching the bridge of your nose. 
pinching. Where is the bridge of your nose? Mm. And if you have done it before, are you going with me? Mm. Have you have done it before? Oh, you mind me. Let me see. If you have done it before, let me see your hands up. You know what it means? Hmm? Especially when you close your eyes. You seem to be making a negative evaluation of what's happening in the conversation. Whatever the person is saying, you think is worth it. You have a different idea. You have a different mind about it. The last one, because you are crying. When you stand with your hands on your hip, what does he mean? I'm sure you all know this one. What does he mean? If you want to more see me, Okay. We are having a conversation. As the conversation is going on, you do this. What does it mean? Two things which you must read. Is that a person has become excited or angry? When people are excited, sometimes they do this. But in that case, you also have to observe their face. The face at which they put. So, what is that one? I'm going to beat you. Hey! What is that one? I'm excited about what you are saying. So now let's look at it. If you have been invited to an opportunity and you go in with this body language, would you open, sustain, or close the door? If I enter a typical palace, you must not go there with a shoe. Kai! Then you buy the land. You want to meet the chief for the land? Remove your shoe. Do what? Sometimes you have to remove the shoe and put it under your armpit. Especially the St. Hens Palace. If you are going to apologize. Now hear me. In the olden days, if a son or a daughter misbehaves and goes back home like a prodigal son, what do they leave behind? They leave their shoe in the palace of their father and they walk barefooted home. And later they wear shoe. But when they leave their shoe, what they are trying to tell you, the father, is as long as I walk, my walk is in your house. Okay. I'll continue on Wednesday. Any question? I know you won't clap. When you don't clap, it has a meaning. Take your seat. Oh, it's true. It's true. It has a meaning. Yeah. When I'm preaching and you stand up, what does it mean? And you don't go home. I'm preaching and you stand up like this. You are, you are, you are, you are soaking it. When I'm preaching and you urinate five times, what does it mean?
Meba. Fio. Você. Don't worry. We don't have time, so I want to explain all this. God can introduce you to great people, better people, but your dress code can allow them never to relate with you again. One of the things I've told myself is that anybody I meet, that person must want to meet me again. And so far, I have it. Anybody I met wants to meet me again. And when you meet me, you will want to meet me again. When you meet me, you will want to meet me again. Because I realize that this language, this dress code, goes everywhere in the world, whether in Germany, in America, or whatever. It goes everywhere in the world. I was teaching a racist something. Let me tell you this. I realized the race picked up after me on so many things. When I'm talking to her mom, she has a story to tell. I'm speaking to her mom, she has a story. Daddy, daddy, daddy. So one day I looked at her and said, Eresi, whenever I'm talking to mommy, you have something to say. Lift up your right hand. And when I say speak, you speak. Yesterday, I went, I was talking to mommy. Eresi lifted up the hands, didn't see. She came. <laughs> but I said, ah, talk. Then she started talking. Why? At this little age, we need to teach our children how to live this language. <clears throat> how to have confidence. Friday, those of you that came for the leaders meeting, I was teaching you that even Jesus was taught this at home. How to relate to God and man. And this thing, the Holy Ghost will never teach you. The Holy Ghost will open the door. By your attitude, will close it. You sit down with an MP, a politician, a president, and they are talking about economy. So what do you have to say? Keep what you have to say and quote them. President Kofo, the last time he said something, it's so interesting that Ghanaians pretend to work and government pretends to pay. That is my economic policy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's not the economic policy. But when you want favor in the sight of the person, you quote the person. This is not the time to bring actually the macro stability of the are you baumia? <laughs> Any question for me? Oh, I did not cheat too much. One day I'll tell you wearing shoe without socks what it means. Look, I'm not if you're on the wedding day last week. Our son asked me to come and pray. If you have a meeting with him on that, uh, one of his head pastor asked me to come and pray, and I didn't get up. The following day, I pray for them. If I had come to pray, I'll break protocol. I'll spoil the wedding. Me, me, my Bishop Dark knows that that Kodesh six to eight, eight to ten. Tend to this M1. So he went to first love where they start the door. Because you see, there are keys that decide certain environments. Jesus could not do much miracle because they said he was a carpenter's son. Is it true? It was Jesus a carpenter's son? But he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want you to tell him he was. He told you he's the son of God. Tell him he's the son of God. You are telling him what you know. He says, left the country because you are telling him what he doesn't want to hear. If no question, let's be on our feet.
Uh, your clap is... Let me show you this. Let me show you this. When people are clapping and it's... Pa, 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 it means that what you said, some agree, some don't agree. But when the applause comes like that, still, you see there, there are discrepancies. So when it comes together, you can read and also know the R. So those whose clap was offbeat, you are yet to understand. My advice to you is that unia here. There are some things only CEOs understand. When you are not a CEO, COO, or you've never opened a company before, you will not understand. You will never understand. It is noise in your ear. Let's lift up our head. Say in the name of Jesus. Every opportunity that I've entered into, I am prepared to dress for it right now. Lord Jesus.